Hello. Today I'm going to tell you about the one thing that I think everybody with a garden should do. I'm Liz Zorab and this is By The Farm. This video is sponsored by EcoFlow and I'll tell you a little bit more about them later on. And today uh, Mr J has joined me in the pursuit of this activity. <laughs> that sounds dangerous. It does sound dangerous and it's not even going to involve any work. Oh okay. So, <laughs> I'm all for that. Hooray. <laughs> and that activity that's going to help your garden be so much better is to spend time in it, not working, but observing. So now we're going to do a food tourist tour together and you kind of get to listen in to our conversation and see how we talk through the things that we're thinking might happen in the garden. I think Mr J would be the first to agree. He's not a plantsman. Not at all. I'm not, I'm not a gardener in any way, shape or perform. form. But you do enjoy the fruits of the of the garden and the vegetables and the veg. So, uh, so we're just going to walk our way through. If he's got questions, he's going to ask them, and I'm hoping that they would be the same questions that you might ask. And if he's asking them, I get to answer them there and then. So we, these are the causal lines that we got given just before we moved. You oh them? yeah, those were, we went down to someone's house and I thought we were picking one thing up and then all of a sudden the car went like that. Yeah, so there were about five or six of these yeah. um, and I didn't realise they were quite as big as they are but I absolutely mm. love them. That's what he was doing, right? What is that? So that, that's that, that a marigold. Like, I was going to say it looks like a gerbera which is one of the few flowers I've ever heard of. Know. <laughs> so that's a marigold. Uh, I brought that with me because I particularly like the colour of it because mm. usually they're bright orange yeah. and that's, that's definitely yellow. Um, and so I'm uh, going to gather as many seeds as I can and scatter that around. Okay. Not as yellow as the, uh, as the um, dandelions, dandelions but no, but pretty close, yeah. pretty close. That is that one of those Jerusalem artichoke things, or is so that just that the leaf looks the same? Globe artichoke is what you're thinking okay. of. It All was right. close. And without going and looking at my books, yeah. I can't remember if that's the artichoke or a cardoon, okay. because they look really similar. And the difference is, with a globe artichoke, you eat the flower... And with a cardoon, you eat the rib of the, the leaf. Okay. So there's still quite a lot of plants not in the ground yet, and I still haven't quite decided where they're going to go. Right. So that's another hennyberry. Okay. I took that as a softwood cutting. From the old place. From yeah. the old place, yeah. This is one of the... Because you've got quite a few berries and... Okay, so along the fence... Along the fence, haven't you? I've put a full hedge in. Uh, and then this morning, I've added in... Uh, there's four... Clematis montanas and they will grow up and they they will grow 20, 25, maybe even 30 feet tall. Okay. But rather than tall, I'm going to train them along the fence. So hopefully when we look at it, we'll have the current bushes all along. Mm -hmm. And then on top of the fence, there'll be the clematis with all these very pretty flowers. And they also smell like vanilla. Right. So that's what these tall things are? And then the tall things are plum trees. Right. Because so I, I thought there were trees up there. I remember, I remember, yeah, I remember so. being coerced into digging holes. <laughs> so the plum trees have gone in. At the top, there's a not a plum tree. It's a crab apple. Right. So basically, we've got a fruiting and flowering hedge going along that fence right. now. These are day lilies, which mm -hmm. uh, there are varieties of day lilies you can eat. We're not going to because okay. I'm not brave enough. But I just I love the plants. Right. And then this, you'll be pleased to see is a lemon balm and that was one that Ooh. your mum gave me oh yeah that smells good doesn't it yeah so that's been really nice i brought several bits of that with us yeah. from the old house there's another of your marigolds marigold. but that's an orange one rather than a yellow there's a pot of chives here these are the ones that got really seriously nibbled by the rabbits when we first moved yeah. here i thought they'd actually killed that plant so i'm quite pleased to see mm. and there's another one there yeah. That's good. I'm glad we managed to say them. The rabbit proof fencing is having some effect. I think it's 100% working. Yeah. And then this <clears throat> uh, unplanted one is another pheasant berry. All oh, right, yeah. You know, the ones that did that, they did the really tall, big arching thing and then had like little purpley bracts and then they ended up with tiny red, no, black little fruits in them. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> this one, yeah. very usefully, is labelled. So it is, <laughs> and it's called Jim. <laughs> so it's a Prunus Stella, so it's a cherry, and the variety is, is Stella. And we have one of those in our old house, right. and that's one of the ones that gave us the vast number of cherries. Okay. 
So there's another little currant bush there. Look how many currants it's yeah. got growing on it. That's doing alright now. That's so all those kind of tiny, really insignificant flowers all then become, become significant fruit. Become fruit. Got a couple of um, just flowers, just flowers. She just says, flowers, yeah. just flowers. So that's a Japanese anemone, and they're great for bees. Okay, well that's good. We like so, the bees. So uh, it comes late. The flowers come late in the yeah. year. And when I first put them in, they were in flower, and they were just like immediately huh. covered with bees. So that'll be rhubarb. That is rhubarb. So that's one of the ones that we brought with us from the old place. Mm -hmm. See what I can see growing next to it is a whole load of buttercup. Yeah. I don't know how to deal with this. The weed suppressing membrane's been really good, except for if I've cut it to plant to plant, yeah. these these grow through so quickly. Yeah. Um, there's some more Japanese anemone there. Probably doesn't help that I just drop it back into the... <laughs> there's some irises, mm -hmm. um, which most of this we brought with us. Right. Peony we brought with us. Mm -hmm. And that's a... That's a lilac tree. Okay. Now, I was given that by if you gave us the lilac tree thank you <laughs> thank you can you uh, can you leave a comment and let me know <laughs> that it was from you it was really nice to get given the tree but i can't remember who gave it to me your I memory mean, is a bit shot at the moment isn't it my memory is very shot at the moment not helped by long journey no, yesterday exactly. so so let's look at the next this is like, like a half row here. Okay. Uh, this has had brassicas in it. Yeah. Um, we've had a little bit of purple spice and broccoli from here. Yeah. And now, as you can see, it's it's going, going over. over to flower. Yeah. But I'm leaving the flowers because they're great, again, for pollinators. And I can see a pollinator on the dandelion. Yes. In fact, you know what? We could still have a little bit of purple spice and broccoli at lunchtime, if mm -hmm. you fancied. Yeah, there's a bit more up here. It's gone nicely to flower. Yeah, cool. That's what I need. <laughs> Strawberries and garlic. No, I need a cup of tea. So I'm going to go and put the kettle on and then come back and do the rest of this. Okay. I think uh, you probably know I am not a great one uh, for bits of kit and gadgets. Um, <laughs> but when we had a power cut about uh, six or seven weeks ago, uh, Mr. J and I were saying how good it would be uh, to have some sort of battery backup or power bank. And that's exactly uh, what this is. So it's an EcoFlow Mini. It is a, a battery storage thing, a power storage thing. You know I'm not great with technical terms, um, but this is absolutely wonderful. It's like seriously portable. So it's I can actually carry it just about with one hand. Um, so it's light enough to be portable. And uh, and it will take ordinary plugs and you uh, plug things in. It's got a control panel here uh, that you switch it on. This is about as technical as I get. Um, <laughs> and it shows you uh, what percentage life you've got in the battery. This unit can be charged from the mains and it takes about, I think it's 1.6 hours um to charge it on the main so it's like a quick charge to get it fully charged or you can use uh, solar panels and that's what we've done so we've got uh, some fold out solar panels uh, that you plug into it leave the panels out in the sunshine we tried to make sure we put this unit into the shade uh, while it was charging i was really pleased by that so that's free electricity as far as i'm concerned and given how much uh, our electrical prices have gone up uh, recently, anything that gives me free power, uh, I'm really happy with. So it has uh, all the information on the control panel at the front, but there's also an app, so you can put it up uh, on your phone and uh, it will even show you when it's in use, how much power it's using, how much it's got left. It's actually a really useful thing to have. Um, so I've plugged in, um, <laughs> I'm going to demonstrate that it works because I'm so impressed with it. So uh, I'm going to make a cup of tea. Um, it, it's brought a whole new world of possibilities um, <laughs> for doing stuff out in the garden. And uh, although, so she's trying to put her kettle on. Have I switched it on? Yes, is the kettle on? Yes. Um, so 
although uh, I'm using it to make a cup of tea now, we have actually tried uh, it with other things. So Mr. J has got our, our little electric lawn mower and I'm really pleased because one of the things that we had with, with smaller areas here to, to mow was that we weren't going to be able to get a great big mower in place and it's too, we're too far away from a power socket to be able to plug the electric mower in. We put the electric mower into this, uh, gave it a go, it works and it works fine. Um, so it means that I'm going to be able to mow the smaller areas, the less accessible areas, using that electric mower. Very happy about that. And it also means that I can do things like charge up my phone uh, and my laptop and things like that. So if I'm going out and about to film, like I was yesterday, uh, I actually took this with me. Uh, I ended up getting stuck on the motorway. Uh, the traffic was solid for three hours. Uh, not even moving, we were just stationary. I was chatting to a friend and to Mr J on the phone and the battery um, on, my, on my phone was running down very quickly. So I was able to plug my phone into the uh, USB socket at this end, recharge my phone on the go. And that was absolutely brilliant. So uh, there are some technical things uh, that you probably want to know about it, but my uh, understanding of technology is not... Uh, great so I'm going to leave information on the screen here so anyone who wants all that technical information now uh, can pause the video and have a look at that uh, and if like me you just want to know uh, if it works and if it's a good idea uh, yes it works yes it's a good idea one of the other things that I actually really like about it is that you can link several of these together and so you can charge them up and then you'll have that power to use over an even longer period of time or you'll be able to use more powerful equipment. EcoFlow have very kindly given me a discount code for you. And so the first 10 people who use the link that's in the video description uh, and my code, which I'll also leave in the video description, uh, will receive an additional 5% off. Until the end of April 2022, they're running uh, an Easter sale and that discount will also be applied to their sale prices. So what have we got at the bottom? This is, this is like show and tell. It's like <laughs> sniff and go or something. <laughs> is that not, that's, that's not the <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, Sweet Bay. So it's a bay tree for cooking. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. You crush it in your yeah, hands, yeah. It'll, you'll get the smell. It's yeah. lovely, isn't it? Well, I bought two of those in the hope of putting them in pots on each side of our front door. Right. Before we'd found the house. Well, obviously, we can't put pots each side of our front door no. now, really, because uh, there's just not enough space. But that was the original idea. Mm -hmm. So I've, that one's gone in the ground. I've got one uh, down at the bottom there that yeah. I still need to get in. Yeah, there's a fair bit down there that's... Uh... Waiting. waiting for its homes to be decided yeah. on. So there's some comfrey. Right. That's Bocking 14. That's the variety. Okay. Which doesn't have fertile seed. So the only way that you can propagate it is through root cuttings. Okay. Um, and so I'm really pleased we've got that. And I've got a tray of that over there as well. Yeah. To go in various different places. That'll be another... Current, current of some sort. some description. So it's either a current or a Jostaberry or a... Uh, chuckleberry but I, I didn't label stuff right i'm guessing that's another cherry that is an apple i'm guessing incorrectly that that's another cherry <laughs> so that's an apple that's one of the ones that we bought that's that's a welsh variety okay yeah uh, and it's called gethly hour gethly hour well uh, yeah g-e-double-l-i gethly gethly yeah. uh a-u-r hour yeah hour or, or something like somewhere. that and it means golden Golden View, Golden Valley, Golden... It's Golden something. Okay. Uh, that's Fever Few, so which is... Um, people do use it medicinally. I was going to say it's a herb, isn't it? Yes and no. And people use... I think they use Fever Few leaves to deal with headaches. We <laughs> don't. I mean, I don't use any of the herbs in a medicinal way like right. that. Because I'm just not certain enough that... Mm. I don't want to poison us. No. That would be a daft move. Particularly uh, when it's something that you're meant to be using to make you feel better. Yes. Uh, so this is um, one of the peonies that I brought with mm -hmm. us. 
Um, and then here is another of the uh, pheasant berries. More stuff in pots. That's got some little tiny primroses in it. Okay. They're native primroses, so those will go into the ground. And another currant. And more currant cuttings. Here's another uh, another lemon balm from yeah. your mum. Mm -hmm. um, but we need to dig that up right. and well, separate it out because this is a hypericum, a St John's wort. Right. And this is lemon balm. And the lemon balm will overtake it and swamp it. So we need to just separate them out. Okay. But that's the sort of thing that we can just lift and put one bit here. Right. Because obviously, although I've started planting in rows... Hmm. I don't want it to be this regimented. I well, want no, it to it, feel you've got to start like, somehow. And I needed to start somehow. So started there, but uh, you know, the next the next lot of plantings will be on the outside of mm. this regimented road to just soften all the edges yeah. and make it. I do want still to have the kind of feel of north south because of the light. Yes, yes. But, but it certainly doesn't need to be regimented. No, rows. I think it. I think it needs to. It will evolve. It's, a, I yes. mean, it's like in our last place. You started that with a lot of set pieces yeah. and set places, and it Exploded. overtook. Yeah. <laughs> it overtook the space. Now, okay, we may have more space here, but the same thing's going to happen. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So that's another of the uh, Welsh apples. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is a little label under here, and it's. Um, it's called Kenneth. Okay. And then there's a couple of plants. Don't know what those are. Oh, that could be a currant of some sort. It's good, this, isn't it? I'm supposed to be the plants woman, mm. and I still don't know. So that then is um, either the cardoon or the or artichoke. Or the artichoke, yeah. Uh, whichever it is. And when I first laid these beds out and first planted, I walked up and down with my phone and just mm. dictated into my phone what was in what position so I've got that recording and I've written it down I'm glad you've written it down because you've changed your phone since then I have so but I've got that recording and it's written down so I actually do have quite a good chart of yeah. of what's gone where including what variety has gone oh where. that's good uh, there are some little cuttings I took oh they're a bit dry aren't they they are four but all four are growing mm -hmm. elderberries oh good um, yes, we have a distinct lack of elderberry here. Yeah, so there's uh, one elderberry tree down there that we can't kind of get at because it's so big and gnarly. Yeah. Um, but I have started planting elderberries. Because mm. it's a very, very versatile fruit and we like, the, we like it. Yes. Um, we like elderberry wine, mm. don't we? Mm -hmm. And you actually quite like uh, elderberry syrup as well. I do. You? Elderberry yeah. cordial. Uh, so, and I want to make some elderberry, oh, maybe I have I made elderberry jam, or I think I've made elderberry jam. You have, you have, yeah. yeah. Uh, so there's another elderberry in the ground, mm -hmm. um, and that will, eventually, that will fill yeah. quite a large oh, yeah. space. And there's two more, three more, of the uh, Japanese and enemies. And with, the, with the elderberries, are we going to try and recreate what happened at the old place, where the... Uh, the, elder, the big elderberry tree we had was originally inside um, some greenhousing. So it, 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 it grew up and then it went over on its side. So we actually could access a lot more of it. Yeah, so the, the main trunk was lying pretty much along the ground and everything grew up. Huh. So the, the branches that should have gone out that way were all, yeah. <laughs> were all going that way. Uh, yes, why not? I mean, that's already leaning. We could actually mm. quietly pin it down and yeah. see what happens. Okay, so the next row is all duck straw, bedding, <laughs> duck bedding uh, mostly strawberries and garlic okay. planted together. So I did an experiment. So this is, these are the garlic, are they? The tall ones yeah. are the garlic. Right. Okay. The things with the yellow flowers are <laughs> oh, dandy <laughs> dandelions. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's one of your marigolds. marigolds. Here are a few... A uh, few and lettuce it, yeah, that I, I put in. I can see a little in. bit of strawberry runner going on as well. So, so some strawberries. Oh, look, these strawberries are coming to flower. Excellent. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's nice. No, that's a daisy. Yeah, so it's, there's a, a fair old mix of stuff in here. Mm. There's actually an awful lot of weeds here. Yeah. Um, and this is the space where I didn't use a weed suppressing membrane made from cornstarch. This just had a thin layer of paper on it. Right. And it wasn't enough. Okay. Uh, the weeds have come up through. So and I've, this is all the learning. 
because you know it's, it it's yeah. we are still what 10 months since we moved in here mm -hmm. um it's going to be a long process getting everything yeah. the way we want it it's amazing what's been done so far it's surprising how much has been done when you when we stop and actually look and i think that's the point isn't it yeah. is the point is that we need to spend more time looking and each time we look we're learning things mm. I mean, because it is too easy to look at stuff and go, oh, but I haven't done, I haven't done, I haven't done. Yeah. And you need to look at what you have done and what has happened. Yes. And that's that positive thing mm. makes such a difference. Yeah, yeah. On a positive note, I've just noticed some sweet Sicily here. Well, that's one of your favourites, isn't it? It is one of my favourite herbs, yes. I want to do the same thing that I did previously where I don't really weed until I'm absolutely sure what things are. Yeah because we're still discovering things growing mm -hmm. and we're just there's, there's a whole load of i noticed over there there are some little tiny purple wildflowers i've got no idea what they are right um and oh. i'm gonna have to look them up oh we also found a, quite a few clumps of primroses in various places that we, we didn't have, know about did we, we didn't say? know here pheasant berry again yep. It's starting to probably look a little more recognisable now. Okay. Um, but the, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> You've introduced me to it twice and I still don't recognise it. <laughs> it will get huge. Yeah. So it will get taller than you and 10 feet across. And, and yet it's still really quite light and airy because it's... Because the... The stems are quite... Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we've got some chives. Mm -hmm. well, they look like forget-me-nots, but... They, they are probably... forget-me-nots. Oh, good grief. That's two I've got right so it far. Is. This is a little hazel. Yeah. Um, our friend Caroline, uh, who lived in the town that you used to work in, mm -hmm. uh, gave me three tiny little uh, hazel trees. But they aren't the same ones that we've got in the hedging. These ones have got those purple leaves mm -hmm. and they'll stay purple even as they mature. Right. So, uh, we've got some cat mint there. Monty will be pleased. Monty will be very pleased. Roses waiting to go in. Another current. Mm -hmm. This is where we start getting an awful lot of plants waiting to go in. Yeah. Because um, obviously I started at that side. I do this every time. I start in one place and get that really well planted up and then... Then the weather changes yeah. and other things get in the way. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and then that's Angelica. And I, I absolutely love Angelica. And I let it seed absolutely everywhere. And I always say I like it for its... its look at me! <laughs> it really does do a huge... A really big flower head on yeah. it um, and we'll get above our head height yeah. this will be another apple it is another apple that look, looks like it's doing quite nicely actually it is this so this is a variety called worcester pear main and we bought this by dramer oh, uh, right. yeah, she yeah, yeah, yeah. took it from our amazon wish list mm. and i'm really pleased to see no. so many yeah that's looking good isn't so it? many uh, blossoms on it so we might actually get some fruit on that this year really? exciting first year well, first year in here, but it's not the tree's first year. Oh, okay. That's the tree's probably three years old now. Okay. So then we're down to some more stuff in pots. We are. And baskets. So that's a peony that I brought with us. All right. This is lesser celandine, which, you know, for many people is just a real pain in the Never proverbial yeah. <laughs> uh, weed. I love it. As a spring flower, it's, it's really pretty. It's like, it's almost like an, an early buttercup type. Okay. And then uh, there's a pot of, ooh, oh, has it got a label? Look, it's uh, Rubecchia Goldsturm, which I've got a feeling comes to about this high with, look, very bright yellow flowers. Sort of, sort of sunflower-ish. Yeah. Uh, but that's obviously quite hardy because that's made it through the winter, not in the ground. And there's loads of it coming back. Uh, obviously, that is just grass. But um, it's well, there's loads of that coming back. And then this is it's bergamot, okay. which is also called monada, uh, and it's also called bee balm, okay. um, and it's used for making Earl Grey tea. And then in this bucket here, yes, is oh, you'll be pleased about this. Screw that up and have a. Have a smell. It smells garlicky. It is. That's wild garlic. Okay. Um, and I planted six tiny little bulbs of it. Right. Two years ago, uh, and then it got slightly larger. I planted it in this bucket to bring with us. Right. And Makes look how the much there yeah. is. Loads of it. And I sprinkled the seeds from last year around. So really pleased about that. 
What's this, this explosion of bush? This is honeyberry. Okay. Um, and it got sorely neglected last year. It's one of the ones that got really dried out. Right. And I wasn't sure it would survive. But it seems to have done. It, and what I probably need to do is cut it back quite hard. Yeah. And maybe I'll do that with like a third of it. Cut it back hard mm -hmm. and let it grow back from, from, from lower cutting, down. Yeah. yeah. And then each year, maybe for the next three years, cut a third of it back hard. to Because it's obviously quite happy there. But, yeah. But there's no point in having all this dead growth in the middle. And no. It will just get this tangly mess. Yeah. So, yes, I'll come back and do that. And you can see... Well, maybe you can't, but one can see um, that the it, it's part of the honeysuckle family. You can almost see the the bark on the stems is just as it would be with a honeysuckle. Okay. That looks rosish to me. It is a rose. It's got a label. It does. It says Nye Bevan. Nye Bevan. So that was a new introduction from David Austin Roses last year. Oh, was it? Yeah. I wasn't in 1946 when we were all so grateful for the NHS. Yeah. Uh, so that was, uh, and Nye Bevan is one of the people who... Well, yes, he was the health minister. He was the health minister who set up the NHS. That is a rowan tree that we brought with us. Okay. So we planted that in our old house as a, a foot high little one-year-old whip. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's now, let's guess, do you reckon that was eight feet? I reckon that was about eight feet tall. Um, so year six with a year nearly 18 months growing in a container not being watered enough yeah. it's done really well so should we just walk straight what, through the road arch, rose arch through the rose arch so this is the arch that we got from direct plants uh, and more than that i designed it yes. uh, with them so i contacted them asked if we could create something like this uh, which we did i'm really pleased with it then what i've come through and that is to put in some bamboo canes into the ground and then slope them at an angle leaning inwards towards the centre of the arch and secured them on this top piece here and I'm going to put runner beans. Yeah, um, I was going to say those, those look like bean supports. They me? are, they're going to be bean supports and where the gaps are yeah. it's either because there is a climbing rose there and I don't want to. Smell uh, it. To, well, and not only that but if we're harvesting i don't mm. want to cut us yes. us to get cut on roses yeah, as we're that's harvesting true. um or i've left them like here i've left it clear and the space over there i've left clear because i'm going to grow squashes up it right and i've got some i've got some really nice jute uh, like almost it's like cargo netting but i've got some jute netting that i'll put on this for the uh, squash plants to climb up it's nice that it's so multifunctional as well yes um because one of the things i I, as I said, not a gardener, um, but occasionally you see people getting very, this this particular space can only be for this, and this space can only be for that, and nature isn't like that. No, it really isn't, and it's not how I garden, I'm very much no, I know that. chucked loads of stuff <laughs> in. And <laughs> so in, in the beds there are daffodils, which have done yeah. really well, there are um, alliums, so part of the onion family. Right. And they're ornamental ones. I can see a ladybird. Look, little ladybird. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, and that's so that's one of the alliums, and it will produce a big flower head with lots of little star type flowers on it. And then the other thing we've got in here are these, uh, which are camassias. Um, and it's the first time I've grown them. And every year on Gardener's World. Monty Don shows you the camassias. I'm like, I want some of those. So I finally got some. Okay. Um, and they almost look like, the flower looks like a giant bluebell. All right. Um, so, <coughs> well, we'll wait and see. I've got some. So if they do well, you're sending in photos? <laughs> I might do. So look, inspired by. <laughs> so I'm really pleased with, uh, with how this is looking. Now, I know that you're thinking that having shown me what things are over in that section of the food forest, I'm going to see them again along here and go oh i know what that is i guarantee you i won't do so so what's this that is a cherry tree and it's from the old place and i found that as uh, it was growing in the ground with just four leaves okay and i thought aha cherry so i brought that with us and i've got so i've got no idea whether it's a eating cherry or whether it's a wild cherry or a Bird cherry. ornamental cherry 
<coughs> excuse me, I've got absolutely got no idea what it is. Look, here's that little purple hmm. flower. I'm looking at the leaves. Oh, it's a, it's a vetch of some sort. It's very pretty. It's like a vetch or a, oh, maybe it's some sort of land cress or something. I'm sure someone will be able to tell me. And now you're talking a foreign language as far as I'm yeah. concerned. <laughs> and then this is um, Lismachia. I know this because... there's a label in the ground. There's a label there. Uh, and it says Lismachia punctata alexander. So it's got this pink tinge to it. But you can see that one there. Mm. It's reverted back to its original form there. So that's got green. So I'll lift that section out. I'm not going to get rid of it. I'll just plant it somewhere else. Well, what is it? So it's a flowering plant. It will produce yellow flowers, uh, individual flowers around. Mm -hmm. I always call it like almost in whorls. Right. Around the, the stem. I love it. I love it. So it's an here. ornamental, not a. Uh, absolutely, not an it's an ornamental. Right, okay. It's it's there for. Yeah, pollinators. That's the word. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That poor old rose, um, I think, is one of the white climbing roses that Jane gave us. Mm -hmm. uh, it does need a drink. Whatever yeah. it happens, I need to give it a drink. Yeah. <sighs> Bronte loves it. Mm -hmm. So this is another cat mint, yeah. catnip. Yeah. Oh, that's really pungent. Oh, it is, isn't it? Phew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there's another apple, one of yeah. the Welsh varieties. And a lupin. Okay. And then this is called Gallagher. G A L E G A Galega. I, I Galega. Know, one of those things, something like that. Produces. Uh, can I remember? The flowers come up to here, and I can't remember whether they're white or pale mauve. But it's very pretty. I saved a whole load of seeds from it last year. Right. Um, I've sown them, and we've now got new plants. Okay. So very happy with that. And the uh, bamboo canes. Nothing to do with it. It's just grown you know, for it. You know what I'm like, I dump stuff on the ground. Has it actually grown around it and through it and things? Oh, it has. So yeah, that came as a support for a plant. Thank you. <laughs> and that's a little, oh, guess, pear tree, I think. Okay. Uh, we were given that, we were right. gifted that. Peony, so it's one of the ones I brought with us. There's a whole chunk, I love peonies. Mm. So there's a whole load that I brought with us. Yeah that were quite expensive ones. Mm -hmm. And then I bought um, quite a few much cheaper ones to go down in the um, cut flower garden. Right. But I won't be putting the, anything from these into cut no. flowers. These are purely for our pleasure. Right. And then that's uh, Lovage. Okay. Let me just check. I'm telling you, yes. So this is lovage, and lovage is I don't use this in our cooking, um, but it makes amazing stock to then put in the cooking. Okay. I'm not going to be that cruel. I'll let you smell it on my hands. Yeah. It's it's horrid, isn't yeah. it? It smells really horrid, and it's and the smell stays on your hands for a long time. But hang on, it's got a slight celery smell. Yes. A slightly burnt celery. Yeah. And it's like it, it does this it's beautiful taste in the inner stock, but I wouldn't actually want to eat it. Yeah. So More catmint. More catmint. And there's some irises in there. And then down here is... Um, <laughs> this is a Taunton Dean Kale. Okay. Cutting from the very big one in our old house. All right. Um, I was trying to grow this as a tree, so I was trying to grow it with a, a straight stem... And just like, a, and then a head yeah. on top of it. But the wind has taken it over, over, right. and so I've just accepted it's not, it's not going to grow up upright. Unless we put I'll a just, stake in, I suppose. We could put a stake in it. You found a stake earlier on, mm. didn't you? Yeah. Um, but the wind really does bash it. Yeah. So I'm just going to take a whole load of cuttings from this, take the cuttings and grow the cuttings on. Okay. And uh, there's some more day lilies there. We've got them because I love them. This is a. Uh, a an apple tree but I don't think this has survived no it looks like it's been well nibbled doesn't it it's one of the ones that the rabbits got to before I realised the rabbits could climb into that hmm. or reach things that were in the water trough and I'm leaving it in the ground 
for at least another two months until yes. I'm conv you know, absolutely certain it's dead. One of the ways you can tell is to scrape back a piece of, with your thumbnail, scrape the bark. Have you got green? Yes. Yeah. So that would imply it's alive. If you, if you do it up here a bit, mm. um, I think your nails are slightly better than mine. Can you do a little bit up there? I'm not getting any green there. So it might be that I need to cut it here somewhere yeah. and let it grow out from there. But the thing is, I'm not getting rid of it. No. While Until there's you know. still a bit of yeah. sign of life, it might just be that it needs to spend much longer establishing its roots. Mm. Um, so we'll just have what looks like a stick for now. Okay. Uh, geraniums and catmints are they used as, as ground cover. And then in this pot, there's some rosemary. Right. Uh, that will be in my, my list of herbs, no doubt. Oh, another uh, apple tree. tree. That's another one of the Welsh apples, isn't it? It is. Uh, more peonies uh, and more currants. It's a kind of a general theme of there's a lot of peonies, there's a <coughs> lot of currants, yeah. there's a lot of daylilies. And rather than having them in big clumps, which I'll do in the field down there, yeah. they're much more uh, spread out okay. here. Onions? Those are leeks. So those Similar are, family. Yeah, same family. So those are the ones that I did an instant raised bed using a cardboard box. Oh, right, yeah. Filled it up with compost. The cardboard's disintegrated now, um, and it's left us with, with the leeks yeah. to harvest. Well, they're kind of ready now, most okay. of them. Um, and then this bed has been, well, it's a disaster. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> warts and all, uh, an unmitigated disaster. So this should have uh, our year's supply of shallots in oh. it. Sorry? Oh. Oh, yes. I can see one here. I think I saw about four or five this morning when I was so looking. So what's, what's gone wrong with it? Um, I didn't put a thick enough layer on top of the ground, on top of the, the, the um, grass before right. I then planted. planted. And So what I did was I put down a, a single layer of paper, put compost on top and planted into mm -hmm. that compost. And... Uh, and basically the weeds have just grown straight up through as that paper's disintegrated quite quickly. Yeah. You know, that's not like a nice thick layer of cardboard or even a single layer of cardboard. It was literally just one layer of paper. And these are uh, these are field weeds, mm. uh, things designed to thrive in, <laughs> in quite adverse conditions in some ways. So, um, so they've done very well and yeah. they have taken over. Um, and the only thing I can do is either just say, abandon this, stop worrying about it, which is what I'm going to do. And when I've harvested the garlic, which is at this end that yeah. has worked, we'll do a complete rethink for this for next year. Yeah. Or for actually just for later in the year, because this will be up um, mid-summer. So we'll do a rethink, decide whether I want to actually have this as an open space, put a whole load of different plants in it put veg in it we'll just wait and see right. but i'm not um you're not going to lose sleep over it i'm not losing sleep over it and it's one row and what i have learned is that I, you know i don't like using the paper because the weeds here are just more uh, hmm. vigorous yeah. than one layer of paper will deal with i i found a metal um spike uh, staple, big, yeah. big staple thing for holding uh, stuff into the ground. I'm just going to put it up on the fence and I get up that far. Yeah. So this is garlic. Yep. Um, this has done well. There are uh, there are plastic bits of plastic here with ah names on them. With names on them. So um, and they are approximately in place. Okay. Uh, so I've got a rough idea of of what I've planted. Um, so those little bits of plastic are intentional. Oh, this is another of your things that was two inches tall, is it? I've forgotten what it was already. It's a rowan. Thank you. Uh, yes, I'm hoping this year that it will flower and we'll get, uh, we'll get some berries on it. Mm -hmm. What do you use rowan berries for? The birds. Okay. Uh, you can use them, but I'm growing them for the birds. Right. In the last house, they just started flowering 
and fruiting really nicely, probably for the last two years mm -hmm. that we were there. So that's wild birds rather than the ducks? Yeah, wild birds. And I want to encourage as many wild birds in as we can get. Mm -hmm. As, as long as they don't eat things we don't want them to eat. Well, yes, and there is going to be a lot of that, I think, for the first two or three years, because I think the last place we had very little damage from birds, and I think that's because we had so much for them mm. to eat yeah. that they could pick and choose bits and pieces. Yeah. Whereas here, there's so little around us again. Yeah. We're back to that, there's so little around us. Although, I mean, there's all the trees and there's yeah. so many berries on the trees. Um, but in the fields, they haven't had this choice of glut mm. of, yeah. of food. So there's another one of those yellow um, marigolds. So why, so why can I not remember their names today? I don't know. Uh, there's yes, a Zorab so, apple. So it's, this is another... Channel uh, Beauty. Yep. It just says Zorab, so that's the first thing I read. Well, yeah, it's not a Zorab apple. <laughs> it is, it's a very pretty uh, one called Channel Beauty. So it's another Welsh variety. Mm -hmm. Uh, locally grown, so used to uh, the local climate. Yep. This is a white currant. Uh -huh. um, it's one of the ones I brought with us. Mm -hmm. And you can you see how much it's leaning yeah. that way? And because that's the way the wind blew it in the last house. Right. But the wind predominantly comes from this way. So you think it'll straighten it so up? So I'm hoping it will, <laughs> it will straighten it up okay. in time. Yeah. Uh, something growing in a pot. Uh, it is regrowing, but I don't know what it is. I can't remember. It's a plant. It's a plant. And then I've put in quite a lot of ground cover in here. Right. Um, and there are things like this tiny plant, which, you know, right now looks like nothing, but mm. it's an echinacea. It's really lovely. does have, um, you can use it in beauty products, and I suspect it's got a medicinal use. I don't know. Don't, don't take my word on it. Um, so in a pot we have... Honeyberry. Honey, honey, honeyberry again, yeah. Uh, desperate to get into the ground. Right. Uh, so we might just need to dig a really big hole. This poor honeyberry has been in a pot since 2015. Good grief. We were given it uh, by friends who were moving uh, to a Scottish island. Right. And um, they brought it in this pot. Okay. Uh, you know, one of the things I love about no dig gardening is we keep having to dig stuff to put things in the ground. Yes, bin. yeah, and but that's then the last time we dig. I dig you that. Know. Yeah, <laughs> very good. <laughs> lupins, mm -hmm. uh, we've got lupins because I love them. Yes. Uh, ornamentals. And that's some more of the Lismachia, the same as the one that was pink over there. But that's a, that's not a pink leaved one. Okay, that's another, another tree of That's apples. another apple tree. Um, that one is called Luckily, it's faded enough that I'm not going to uh, <laughs> murder the Welsh language. <laughs> Am I going to murder the Welsh language? <laughs> no, I'm not. <sighs> is that? Yeah, no, it's, it's very faded. But again, that will be on my planting plan. And then this um, is a plant that I brought from mum and dad's all right so it was at mum and dad's then we were brought a piece by the the, the family that bought, bought it, mum yeah. and dad's house came to visit us in our last mm. home they brought us a piece of that I'm really pleased to see how well that's grown what is it um yes <laughs> sorry to ask an awkward question but you know. I know and I've got the wrong name going on in my head and I'm going to say it's something Bistorta, and I can't remember what the first part is. Okay. Um, mm, and I can't re No, I'm not going to try and remember. See, now I'm thinking of songs by Slade, like Lock Up Your Bistorta. <laughs> I'll put the name on the screen if I remember. So there is another honeyberry. Taking, right. That's a cutting from uh, that one in the pot mm -hmm. there. Um, and with honeyberries, you need two different plants for them to pollinate, cross-pollinate each okay. other. And I don't, well, I don't know if they need two different varieties or just two different plants. But on the grounds that we had fruit in the last house, whatever that is and the other one is, they're the right thing for them to, to cross-pollinate. To, to cross right. This is um, a silver birch, okay. um, which was grown from seed from our old house. Oh, right. 
so yeah, that's we had some nice silver birch then. We? Yeah, so that was I collected seeds, screwed seeds. I'm really pleased with that. And then at the bottom of the garden there, I've I've started what well, I don't know, and I'm I, we need to talk about this whether to put in a border across there. Mm -hmm. So there's a hedge at the back. Yeah. And then I'm kind of a bit of me is inclined. Do you know how we had the shrubbery in the old house? Yeah. To have something like a shrubbery, but mostly roses. Okay. Across here. But I just don't know. So I think it's one of If you do that, I would hope they would be the thornless type because we're going to have to be moving along. Uh, no, you're not going to get a thornless type of rose. Right. So we'd have to put things in front of the roses to, yeah. to stop you getting scratched. But if you want to go into the middle of it, between that and the, the border hedge. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, yes. Okay, well, I'll have to have a think about it. But, the moles um, have been busy, then. Moles have been really busy. So we're into the wider spaced rows now. Yeah. I forget why we've got wider spaces in these rows. Is it just because of the ground, or is it because of...? My original planning was for them to be this wide apart. Right. And then I felt we could use the space in between to grow veggies or something. Mm. And was, or that particularly, was that particularly after the, the first realization of the rabbits was coming yes in, right. yeah so once once we realized there were rabbits it was like i need to put as much as i can in here right so uh, there's another lovage at the end there not going to get you to to smell that one mm -hmm. and lemon balm and apples can you see how like there's this theme of it's the yeah. same it's the same things repeated peonies uh forget me not yeah um and then i've got a few little bits of grass here which I'm, I'm really pleased with. And again, more of the, the plant from my mum. Mm -hmm. And I'm almost going to kind of clump these three rows in together because they are, everything is just repeated. Right. Apart from one or two plants. So if we just highlight those. Yeah. This is a mulberry tree. Yeah, we put that in when we first arrived. It was so, one of the yeah, earliest so, things we did, wasn't it? Yeah. But I was thinking we could, we now need to take this netting down. Yeah. Uh, and deconstruct the, the rabbit proofing I put mm. around it because I quite like to uh, put some cardboard around it mm -hmm. and mulch, yeah. give it a really good drink and mulch it yeah. uh, so that it's not in competition with all the grasses that yeah. have grown through. Yeah. But I wasn't sure whether this would make it through it's looking good. the first winter here. That's definitely settled in. Yeah. Loads of new shoots, loads of new buds. Mm. I'm very happy. This was not a cheap tree. No. So um, this was my treat to me. Mm. Um, and this was uh, just a little bit shy and a tiny, tiny bit shy of £100. So it was a proper treat. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing about mulberry trees is they grow, they grow tall, but they actually grow really wide. Mm. And... If this is going to eventually grow really wide, there's no point in having very much growing Either underneath it, it no. because it's going to get shaded out. Mm. So we can put in stuff for now, yeah. or maybe even for the next 10 years, but I'm, I'm conscious that over time stuff around it is, is going to start being about, in yeah. shaded. Yeah. So there's another uh, very big white currant at the top there. Yeah. So we'll be okay for white currants this year. Over here is a kind of a repeat of apples, lupins. That apple tree is coming, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's another one of the ones that we thought had been rabbited, isn't it? Uh, oh, yes, it is. So that's uh, a dwarf Bramley apple. That's a cooking apple. I'm right. really pleased that's come back. Yeah. But yes, it's got a lot of, of damage on it. Yeah. Um, and what will happen is if a rabbit goes all the way around on the bark and literally rings it all the way around, it's very likely to die. Yeah. Do you remember at the old house you accidentally caught the silver birches with a strimmer? Yes. And it went right round. Yeah. And rather than killing it, it actually came back up from below yeah. that mark. So yeah. we suddenly, instead of it being a tree, it was more like a shrub. Mm. So it was that, it's that same principle. Yeah. Really pleased that that's growing back. That's another of your Welsh variety apples. That's a Baker's Delicious. Nice. So these are cooking apples at this end okay. by the look of it. Uh, gosh, have I been that organised? <laughs> Accidentally. <laughs> Accidentally, I think, maybe. Um, and then at the back here, uh, there is a... The difference between this tree and most of them yeah. is that this is a two-year-old. Right. So it was already 
a bit more mature, so it's got more branches. Okay. Um, that's looking good. And then next to it, this is Solomon's Seal. I love this plant. So it produces these, these sort of arching stems with little white bell-like flowers. Mm -hmm. But you can eat Solomon's Seal when it first comes up, when these these first come out of the ground, you can cut them and eat them exactly the same asparagus. Oh. So it is called a poor man's asparagus. Okay. Goldenrod here, which grows to about this high with yellow fluffy bits on top. Uh, in some places that's considered a weed or right. a pest. Some parts of America I think that's considered a, mm. a nuisance plant. I love it. We've got the space here for it yeah. to really be able to spread out. And then at the back here is that wildlife area. Yeah. Uh, which I've got masses more to go into and I just need to find the time to get those in. I and thought you were growing time. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> and then uh, around the pond here, um, this pond is looking pretty good actually. Yeah. This is, I mean, our ponds are not lined. Uh, that soil is fairly clay. I have seen it dry out. Yes. Um, but it's, it has got a little bit of water and it hasn't rained here for a couple of days or so, has it? Possibly even longer. So, so that's good. And then around the edge, I've been being crafty. Ha oh, ha. Um, you had a willow weaving workshop here, didn't you? I did. So uh, I've been learning how to do willow weaving. Um, I'm, there'll be another workshop in, I think I'm going to do one in November, maybe December. Uh, and certainly some more next year. Um, and it'll be nice then, because we'll be able to show people what it looks like a year on. Yeah. So I took uh, everything I'd learnt uh, in the willow weaving workshop uh, and applied it here. So this will be a living fence. Mm -hmm. um, well, you can see. Yes. It's all, it's all uh, yeah, looking very I mean, green already. Yeah. Um, and I've woven in different types and therefore different colour willows yeah. at, at the bottom. And, uh, and then this kind of yellowy one all around the top. I'm really pleased with mm. it. It's going to provide a bit of shelter yeah. and a very private space. Um, not that we need a private space, but it will uh, a space that will be sheltered, even more sheltered for wildlife. Yeah. Um, and hopefully it will just look really attractive. I'm pleased with it. Yeah, that's looking good. So once again, thanks to EcoFlow for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check out their website using the link below. And if you place an order and you're in the first 10 people to use the discount code, you'll get an extra 5% off your purchase price. We bought an awful lot of plants with us and at the time I made a couple of videos showing exactly how I was preparing to move my garden from our old house to our new one. And if you click on the link here, that will take you directly through to that video.